Hi, my name is David Stewart and I'm a sales engineer with JetBrains Team City. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the newest features in Team City 2020.1, uh, which is our latest release. Uh, it came out on May 18th and is now available for download and upgrade. Uh, as always, our full release notes are available in our documentation and on our blog, and I'll provide links to those in the description below. Before we take a look at some of these items individually, let's start by taking a look at some of the highlights from this release. For a long time, conditional build steps have been our most voted on uh, enhancement requests, and we're happy to announce that we finally implemented this feature in our latest release. As an aside, our bug tracking and enhancement request system, uh, UTrack, is publicly available. So head over to that page if you'd like to vote on enhancements or make an enhancement request of your own. Kubernetes cloud profile support, which was previously available via an external plugin, uh, it's now been bundled into Team City. Um, we're continuing to make changes to our experimental UI as we move towards full parity with a classic UI. Uh, both, of the, both of the user interfaces will remain available in Team City uh, for the foreseeable future, but in this latest release, we added some additional pages for uh, managing agents and also managing your projects. Uh, and then finally, we have also added some additional integrations with some common SDLC tools, including uh, the ability to de detect pull requests in Azure DevOps. Uh, we've added the ability to view build information inside uh, Jira Cloud. And we've also added notifiers for both uh, Slack and your web browser. So let's start out with conditional build steps. Conditional build steps allow you to set execution conditions on individual build steps. A common use case here um, that we'll take a look at is you may have a script that you only want to execute if Team City is building off of a specific branch. Uh, conditional build steps allow you to do that without having to create a separate build configuration. Uh, you can add conditional build steps to any of the runner types in Team City. And in addition to some commonly used scenarios that are available via the dropdown, you can also create your own conditions based on build parameters from the Team City server and agent. Uh, so let's see it in action. Here we're looking at a build configuration called Deploy to Production. It executes a single build step. Uh, it's a command line runner that runs a script. So let's see how we can make this a conditional build step. First, we're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to click on Show Advanced Options. That's going to unhide some fields at the top here. Uh, we're looking for the Execute Steps field. And on the right hand side, you'll notice a new drop down for Add Condition. Now, we've included some common scenarios in this drop down, including only running this step if it's in the default branch, only running the step if it's in a release branch, or skipping a step entirely if the build comes from a personal build. We can also create our own conditions by selecting other conditions. We can type out a parameter name and that'll start to auto populate. I'll select Team City Build Branch. And then there's a number of conditional statements that we can select. And then we would input our conditional value. Conditional build steps will work both in the user interface or if you're using uh, the Kotlin DSL with the version control settings. You can also uh, add your conditional build steps uh, with the Kotlin DSL, um, viewing it in the UI or just making the changes directly to your settings.kts file. Kubernetes has long been supported via JetBrains developed plugin. Beginning in 2020.1, we've now bundled our Kubernetes cloud profile support directly into the product. Uh, you no longer need to download and manage the plugin uh, in order to take advantage of Kubernetes cloud profiles. Uh, this support allows you to run cloud agents directly inside your Kubernetes cluster. The only thing to note with this release is the previous plugin used to include a Helm build runner. Uh, that build runner is not part of the bundled integration. So if you need to use the Helm build runner, uh, you'll have to utilize an uh, additional plugin which is, which is available on our plugin site. In the experimental user interface, we've made some changes to the agents, projects, and subprojects page. Uh, if you have feedback you'd like to share on the experimental UI, 
please get in touch with myself, uh, technical support, or the sales team so we can pass that feedback on to our front end uh, developers. Let's take a look at some of the new features. So the first page is the agents page. This is gonna give you a high level view of all of the agents that are connected to your instance. Uh, if we scroll down here, we can see uh, some details about what the agents are up to uh, with specific builds that are being executed. An additional feature that's available in both the classic UI as well as the new UI, we now offer the ability to download a full zip distribution package for an individual agent. Uh, prior to this release, if you were using external plugins and you wanted those to be installed on a build agent, uh, after the agent connects to the TeamCity instance, it would go through the process of installing those external plugins. Uh, if you're regularly spinning up and down agents, this new feature can save you some, uh, some time on that process. On the favorites menu on the left-hand side, we now offer the ability to reorder uh, the way in which these projects appear. If you click on the pencil icon on the top left corner, it'll bring up this screen and you can use the arrow keys to move individual build configurations up or down uh, or whole projects up or down as needed. On the projects and sub-projects view, we've added the ability to see the latest status for uh, build configurations that have run and executed. You'll see little green uh, or red icons to indicate the latest status of the build. And you can also expand these to find more information about the latest build. Finally, let's take a look at some of the improvements we've made uh, to integrations with SDLC ecosystem tools. First off, we've added pull request support for Azure DevOps. We've long had support for uh, GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket uh, offering pull requests. This extends the support uh, to those using Azure DevOps for their version control system. Uh, the pull request support uh, lets you automatically load pull request information and run builds based off of those pull requests. Uh, in the Azure DevOps implementation, TeamCity is going to detect the requests in the merge branch, uh, and each build is going to be launched on a virtual branch showing the actual results of the build after merging with the pull request. We have a great blog post from late last year on integrating GitHub pull requests with TeamCity. Uh, it can be a great starting point if you're looking to add this as a build feature into your own pipeline. We also introduced support for Jira Cloud, uh, allowing you to see additional build information from TeamCity directly inside Jira. You can see it at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, for this particular issue, we have one build. It's showing a uh, passing, uh, passing build on the bottom right there. We've also added some additional ways to be notified about uh, actions that happen inside TeamCity. The first is with the Slack integration. This has previously been, been available via a JetBrains developed external plugin. We've now bundled that into the solution and it allows you to receive private messages or notifications directly in a Slack channel. Uh, when builds fail, pass, you can set your own conditions inside TeamCity. Uh, in the same vein, we've also added a new web browser notifier. Uh, this is done via an extension inside Firefox, Chrome, Opera, and Edge, and you can set your notifications and receive them directly in the web browser as well. I wanna to touch on a few other improvements in the 2020.1 release of TeamCity. First, we've made the investigations history accessible in the web user interface. Uh, this feature is gonna be most helpful for larger teams or projects when it's not always easy to determine uh, who or when a uh, specific change has resolved an investigation. We've also changed the way notifications work. So now you can apply notifications at the build configuration level. This is gonna be useful for folks who want to configure notifications to go out to large groups, either via Slack or email. TeamCity uh, stores all secure values used in project configuration files in a scrambled form. 
the initial values are stored in the team city data directory and their safety primarily depends on the security of your specific environment. Uh, as an extra level of security, we now support the ability to add custom encryption keys for protecting those secure values. Uh, and finally, with each release, we're coming closer to providing full parity between the primary and secondary nodes in a multi-node architecture setup. Uh, in the latest release, Team City can now support a few additional features that can help offload CPU intensive tasks onto the secondary server. Please take a look at the links in the description below uh, for any of the items we discussed today. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can contact me directly. My email is on the screen, or you can always get in touch with your sales team uh, or technical support, and they will help route those questions in the right direction.